it was just that started a spiral of me blatantly ignoring what God was telling me. And I don't know why I was doing that because he had helped me so much and brought me so much freedom and joy, but I still chose in my own human depravity Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, my name is Gabrielle and I'm so happy that you are here. Today I am going to be doing something that I have never done before. I am going to share my testimony with you guys. Now, if you were like me and you grew up in an environment or in a church denomination where very dramatic testimonies were glorified, then if you had kind of a boring testimony, you may have felt like my story is not valuable and no one cares what I have to say, but I am here to tell you today that that is not true. That is a lie straight from the enemy to try and get you to not share your story with the world. And I promise you, he wants that. He wants you to stay silent and not share the testimony of the faithfulness of God in your life, even through hardships. And even if you have been walking with God from an early age, that is a testimony and people are encouraged to hear that. So if that is you, that is also me. And that is why I'm sharing my story today. I believe that it is so crucial to share our story with the world because there is power in numbers and there is power in coming together and testifying what the Lord has done in our lives whether it is a dramatic testimony or whether it's not. I think that there's power in sharing both of those and respecting both of those at the same time. And I grew up in the Assemblies of God denomination and I would go to these conferences and things that would really glamorize very dramatic testimonies. And so I was one of those people who thought, you know, my testimony is not powerful and I'm not gonna share it with anyone. But God has a funny sense of humor and he can add a few things in to spice it up. So without further ado, I want to share my story with you guys. I grew up, both of my parents were Christian growing up. And then when they got married, they both came from different denominations. And so when they got married, they kind of were having to decide what denomination do we want to attend? What kind of values do we want to instill at our kids? And I am so thankful that they chose to raised my brother and I in a way that revered and respected and honored the Lord, but I did not appreciate that as a child. I appreciate it now, but I did not. And I think the Bible is kind of, you know, funny about that because it does say train a child in the way they should go and when they're older, they will not depart from it. And so, yeah, I just think that God has a little bit of a sense of humor. From an early age, I believe I went to like a Christian preschool. I was taught the word, you know, I had to memorize Bible verses, all this. And when my parents would discipline me, I would write Bible verses over and over again. And it was irritating, but it was a good way for me to memorize scripture uh, because otherwise I was kind of just rebellious and stubborn and I probably wouldn't have. When I was little, I gave my life to the Lord. I want to say I was seven and I decided to get baptized. Now, did I fully understand what that meant at the time? Not really, but in a childlike, very pure way, I did. And I'm thankful that I had that love for Jesus and perspective. I remember having dreams when I was a little kid that I was like sitting on a swing, like talking to Jesus, or I was like doing these different things. And like, I just, I felt such a closeness with the Lord from a really early age skip forward into middle school, then I started going through a bit of a rebellious phase and I was like, is the Bible even real? Are these facts even like aligned with history? I don't even know that I believe in God. Like I started to do all that. And I think that that's normal, one. And that's okay because scripture is without fallacy. And it's okay to question that because we will be able to come back to the truth. So I went through this questioning phase probably for a year or two when I was in middle school. And then as I got into high school, I started coming back around and realized that I did believe in Jesus for me, not because my parents did, but because I did. And I chose that for myself. And at the same time, I still was like mocking, literally mocking worship music when I would hear it. I thought it was so dumb. I didn't want to listen to it. I only wanted to listen to secular music. Meanwhile, I had been singing my whole life and everyone told me like, Gabrielle, you're going to be a worship leader. You're going to sing in the church, blah, blah, blah. And I, I 
did not want any part of that, to be quite frank. I wanted to be like a famous singer and I just, I didn't want to accept the call that God had given me. During high school, a couple of very traumatic things happened that kind of ended up spurring me into the direction that God had for me. The first is that I was so pure, bless my heart, um, and I was in a relationship in high school that I really valued, but I was so young and naive, and it really hurt me very deeply. And it left me with a lot of wounds and scars, and honestly, it made me realize that I had put so much of my value and my weight into another person to the point where I truly believed that no one would ever love me in X, Y, or Z way again because I had put so much stock in one person instead of in the Lord, and I didn't trust that he could bring me someone else, which is so sad when I think about it in retrospect. But that breakup broke me to my core. And simultaneously, along those same lines, we, my mom's side of the family, experienced a death in the family of my cousin, who was very young, and it was just a really hard experience for my family. And it's not something that I would wish on anyone. But both of those experiences happened around the same time, and, um, you know, when someone passes away, usually they've lived a good, full life, but this was not the case. And this family member grew up in my same neighborhood, so we were relatively close, and it was just a devastating blow because I didn't understand why God would cause that. I had never experienced something so deeply hurtful to, you know, it's one thing for something bad to happen to you, but then to happen to your entire family is just mind boggling and gut wrenching. All right, I had to pull it together. Anyways, it was very hard and it still is difficult for my family. I go through a breakup, my cousin passes away, and this launched me into one of the worst seasons that I've ever experienced in my life. I've definitely had worse since then. Uh, but this was just awful and I started sleeping with my parents every night after all this had happened because I was having nightmares. I was shaking in the middle of the night. I couldn't sleep and I feel so bad for myself looking back in retrospect. I wish I could just give that person a hug. I was extremely depressed and I didn't really like see a way out of it to be honest. And I had such awful anxiety. And I was just at my wit's end. And I didn't know what to do. And so my last resort, which should have been my first resort, was I had a radio in my room. And they played sermons on it on one particular channel. I think like all day, every day. And so I started listening to them and I started diving into the word and just seeing things in a way that I'd never seen them before. And God was speaking to me and I started listening to worship music all the time. And I, uh, God healed me through that experience. He really did because I was so broken. And during that time, God spoke to me that he wanted me to be part of helping other people heal through worship ministry in the same way that he had healed me, but I had no idea all of the other things that I would go through in life after that. And you can't ever really heal the wound of someone passing away. You can honor their memory. And the Lord really healed me through those experiences. And that fall, I started an internship and I just thought everything was like hunky-dory. And that I was just on like an upward trajectory. But the next summer, it really hit me that I was still deeply grieving from both of the situations that had occurred. And so, ooh, there are just tears everywhere. They're coming out of my nose, they're coming out of my eyes, they're falling everywhere. And I think I have mascara in my eye and it hurts. So I went to youth camp that summer as a leader and there was a time of worship towards the end. And I remember, <sighs> crying and praying and begging God. And I 
I was so used to being in pain all the time and crying and like putting myself back in that emotionally damaged place. And I prayed and I said, God, I want to fully release this to you. I don't want this anymore. Not with the grief of losing someone in my family, but with the breakup in particular, I was like, I release this soul tie to you completely, God. Like, I cannot hold on to this anymore. I don't, I don't want this pain. I don't want this suffering. I need to be released so that I can move on. And when I prayed that, I felt a huge physical and spiritual weight lift out of my chest and off of my shoulders. And I started praying in tongues. And it wasn't some like gimmicky thing that I grew up at these conferences thinking like one, two, three, bam, I'm gonna pray in tongues. Like, no, it was a sweet, amazing spiritual experience that the Lord gifted me with. And I am so thankful that he allowed me to be able to pray in tongues. And that's so crucial to my testimony. And when I was at Liberty, I had to make a ministry resume. And I put that particular part in the part where I was supposed to share my testimony. And the advisor told me to take it out uh, because no one was going to hire me. And I told her, I don't want to work at a church that doesn't accept my full testimony, that won't hire me. I don't want to be a part of that. Because this was a huge part of like, I, I released something from my life and God gave me something in that empty place. <sighs> Moving forward, you know, I'm in this beautiful place with the Lord. I'm thriving. I'm like releasing these things. I'm going into these new seasons. And bam, I start dating someone who <sighs> at the beginning of the relationship, I clearly knew that I was not supposed to be dating, but I just really wanted to date them. And so I ignored what God told me. And I started dating them anyway, and we ended up breaking up. So it was kind of pointless. This person is really nice, um, and I'm still friends with them. But it was just that started a spiral of me blatantly ignoring what God was telling me. And I don't know why I was doing that, because he had helped me so much and brought me so much freedom and joy. But I still chose in my own human depravity to just start pushing back against what I was supposed to be doing. Fast forward, I move into Liberty. I meet Austin and I think, wow, this is an amazing man of God. I know I'm going to marry him. But Austin and I were not in good places in our lives. And although we loved each other and although it was so beautiful, like falling in love with someone at the same time, we were not in good places spiritually. And we kind of like pushed each other that way. So it just goes to show like who you choose to hang out with, who you choose to have a relationship with will definitely affect your relationship with God and your mental space. And I had never, and I know I've touched on this in another video, but I had never had sex with anyone and Austin had. And so we ended up choosing to do that in our relationship. And it's something that I almost instantly regretted from day one. It ate me alive and I felt so consumed and guilty because I knew that that's not what God wanted me to be doing with my life. But unfortunately, because we're human and we love sin, I continued down this spiral of saying, okay, I'm gonna change God. Okay, no, I'm not because I love my sin. I'm gonna keep going back to it. Okay, I'm gonna change God. And all the while I was still leading worship and I was living such a double life I didn't even recognize myself. I was so consumed with like this persona that I was putting on in worship that I had lost total sight of the power of worship, the freedom and the healing that comes with worship. And the whole point of worship is to give praise to God. And I just completely lost sight of that. And I started to get so lukewarm in my faith and so honestly, my heart started turning to stone and I felt like I had all this head knowledge of Christianity and I didn't even really need to read the Bible because I knew who God was. I knew his character. I knew the things I was supposed to be doing. And so that leads me into in 2020, three years ago, I started a worship residency in Charlotte. That's why I moved here to this beautiful city because I felt like God was calling me to do this residency. And 
Whether or not he was calling me to is definitely up for debate because I had a lot of second thoughts and reservations and I didn't feel right about asking people for money. I That never sat right with me. The church should have been paying a salary for the people who were coming to work for them for free, basically. I started this residency and at that point, I had started to be in a better spot with the Lord and you know, my, my heart was being softened and I really felt like I was listening to the voice of God. I started to meet awesome friends who also love the Lord and I just felt like my life was going in a really positive direction. But Austin and I were still struggling with, you know, sexual impurity in our relationship. You know, it, it wasn't to the same level that it was in the past, but it was still a problem because I was doing a worship residency and I wanted to be one way, but I was still struggling and I didn't know how to be free of of that struggle. Finally, in the spring, I decided to come forward to someone who ended up betraying my trust <laughs> about that. But at the end of the day, I think that that person thought that they were doing what was right at the time. I was seeking help, so I did need some assistance and support. And I did not receive that from this church. And they ultimately fired me. There were other things, there were behavioral things that had happened earlier in the year, but I had, I never really had a real job before. I didn't know really what I was doing and it was really just a time for me to learn and grow and they chose to fire me. And although at the time I was mad and upset and confused and all of the emotions that are totally valid because a woman should not be treated like that in a church, I see so clearly now God's divine plan for my life and for what he truly wanted for me and in his grace and in his kindness that's not what he wanted for me he did not want me to stay there yes was I thriving was I growing yeah was I starting to read my bible a little bit more yes but to be honest with you and this is two years out just like thinking about this in retrospect I I did not have any spiritual discipline I would read my bible once in a while I would get something from it but I really didn't know how to like digest scripture I I was lost, like I was leading people in worship, but I didn't even know where, like I didn't even know what I was doing, to be honest. And I know that everyone, you know, at some point in their life doesn't know what they're doing, but I do believe that leadership in a church carries certain spiritual responsibility. And I, I mean, the Bible's pretty clear, like there are standards for people in leadership in the way that they live their lives. And that was a part of why I confessed because I didn't want to be that type of leader. I didn't want to be two-faced. I wanted to be honest. And I wanted help because I wanted to be set free from something that had enslaved me for such a long time. And I felt powerless to. When they fired me, I definitely could have gone one of two ways. I could have been like, woe is me. God doesn't love me. God is far from me. He doesn't have a plan. He doesn't know what he's doing. But instead, at that time, Although I felt lost, although I felt scared, and although I felt so confused and alone, I felt like I could trust in God's plan. And I'm saying this really in retrospect because at the time I probably felt a lot of those things, but now like I fully trust that that was what God had in mind for me. After that, I started working like a bunch of random jobs. I worked at Target, I worked at like a daycare, and I started learning so much about myself and I had always wanted to start a YouTube channel but I was always scared to and I never like knew how to branch out. I didn't even know how to edit YouTube videos but I feel like since then God has allowed me and given me this opportunity to share my heart with the world and I'm so so thankful for that because if I had never gotten fired, I would have never met the friends I did when I started working at Target that fall. And some of those friends have like come to know Jesus. And that's such an amazing testimony. And I can't believe I get to be a part of that. And I never would have met the friends that I met at the daycare who are now some of my very best friends. And then I started nannying, I never would have done that. And then I started editing this girl's YouTube videos and I never, well, I had taught myself how to edit before I started working for her, that's how I got the job. <laughs> but there are certain like hacks and tricks and things that I learned that I never would have known. And that led me to the job I have now. I'm an executive assistant um, for a girl who has a photography business and a production company. And it's taught me so much about myself and self-discipline, but 
all of that to say, you never know what opportunities God is going to strip you of in order to replace it with something so much better, even if it's not the plan that you had in mind, even if it's not the perfect cookie cutter thing that you thought that God had planned for you, what he has planned is so much better. I promise you. All of that to say that not everything we pray for is what is best for us. And when I was fired from that church, I prayed that God would change their minds, that he would restore me to that role. And that is ultimately the last thing God wanted for me. There were a lot of toxic things about that church, and I'm so thankful that I don't go there anymore. But it's not about that. It's about me and my personal growth with Jesus. And I can truly say over the last year, God has taken me on a journey, like I mentioned in my health video, and really taught me not just like, oh, here's some scripture, but like, here's scripture, here's how it's applied to you. Here is my holy word that is inerrant, that does not return void, and that is a foundation of promises that I can hold on to no matter what I'm going through. I've been through some stuff that's been really hard over the last few years. I have like lost friendships over the last five, six years and that I thought were like core friendships to who I was. And like I thought they were lifelong and some of them have come back around and I'm so thankful like for God's timing. One of my best friends, like we didn't talk for a while and now she is one of the biggest blessings in my life and she encourages me so much and she's, she's really like a sister to me even though she doesn't even live in the same state. What that has taught me is God's timing is everything. And you know, you can just say like, oh, that's just a cliche, or you're just saying that because something didn't work out for you. And sure, like some people might do that and that's fine. But I'm saying that from such a genuine place because I can't force anything that's not meant for me, that doesn't come through God's hands. And I know now that everything I have, whether it's, you know, my job or my spouse or my friendships or my apartment or my car or literally whatever, my family, like all of those blessings came directly through God's hands. And anything that needs to leave my life, I pray that it leave because it's not serving me and it wasn't meant for me and it's not edifying my relationship with Jesus. And that's something that God has taught me over the last year is like, I have to rely on him 100%. Like I ke I keep, <laughs> we're human. So like, I keep thinking that I know this, that I've like learned this lesson. But I, like I mentioned in the very beginning of this video, I have always been kind of stubborn and hard headed, thinking I know the right way and what's best for me and all that, but I don't. And God has been sanctifying me so much over the last year and stripping things away that I didn't realize needed to be stripped away basically my testimony is that God is faithful and no matter what hardship you're going through, no matter what trial, what thing that you're going through, you can come to Jesus with that. He wants to hear about it. He wants to be there with you through it and he wants to heal your heart. I promise you. And also go to counseling. That's my other <laughs> recommendation for uh, pain and trauma. The other thing I want to share is that like just the different examples of how God's been teaching me is this year I've really felt God giving me examples of how to trust him. For instance, my husband has been working so hard at his job to make commission since about May and every time he was about to give up hope he would get a new customer and something amazing would happen and Every time I felt like, I don't know, like where the money's gonna come from, like God has provided this year, every single time. And I was gonna say, I don't know how he does that, but I do know how he does that. He is our provider. And that doesn't always mean money. That could mean emotional stability. That could mean heart healing. That could mean literally anything, but it's just been so beautiful. And even like, we have been talking about wanting to have kids for like almost a year and been working on that and at first when it wasn't happening I was getting really upset and hysterically crying as any normal person would do who just feels discouraged 
But lately, like, I forget that it's even, like, on my radar because I'm just really trying to trust God's timing. And it's really difficult, but at the end of the day, I saw something amazing on TikTok the other day that was saying, or on Instagram Reels, that was saying, everyone is on their own timeline. Why would I want to be living in someone else's timeline that's not meant for me? It's meant for them. I have a different timeline that is beautifully and wonderfully made for me. And I think that applies to like what God has planned for us. And that allows you to like be happy for other people and still trust that God is bringing things into your life when it is perfect timing for you. Anyways, that being said, I've learned a lot over the last year. I know I'm gonna still learn so much more. My testimony's not done. Everybody is constantly growing and evolving and God is constantly teaching them something new. And I think that that's amazing and beautiful and we need that because we need to be constantly sharpened. I love you guys so much. I really appreciate you taking the time to listen to my life story. There's probably other things I forgot and things that I could go into detail about that I may choose to at a later date. I love you. And I so appreciate you listening and I hope that you stay tuned for the next video because I have a really good one coming your way. So have a blessed weekend or day depending on when I put this video up or when you're watching it and I will see you in my next video. Bye!